electricity is one of the most important innovations of all times as it is involved in every aspect of our daily lives. Even though people lived without it for centuries, it stands as an essential element for life today. Let's be realistic, be honest. Who can live without electricity? No mm -hmm. one wants to go back to spending dark nights brightened by candlelight. People nowadays would find it difficult to give up electricity for minutes, even for seconds. It would be difficult because of how important it has become in our daily lives. Electricity now surrounds everything in the world around us. It is difficult for any of us to imagine a life without many things that run on electricity and even more difficult to live without it. Electricity is one of the blessings that science has given to humans. It is integral to in all the different facilities in our daily lives. Not to mention how different uses of electricity are increasing and evolving day by day. In short, everything, every aspect, every material, every comfort, and every luxury in our life, directly or indirectly, electrical power is involved one way or the other way. But today's my topic is not about the use of electricity. I'm going to highlight electrical safety, how to use electricity safely, how to use electrical appliances safely, how to test the electrical equipment and plants safely, how to reduce the risk and how to control the electrical hazards at work. You must ensure that the electrical plant or equipment in your workplace remains safe. To do this, your workplace should have a system of periodic electrical plant inspection and testing. A competent person who is suitably qualified should undertake this responsibility of testing and inspection of electrical appliances, electrical plant or equipment. Dear friends and fellows, electrical equipment or plant testing generally involves a visual inspection. Checking earth continuity to confirm the equipment is earthing correctly. Testing insulation resistance by measuring current flow to see whether the insulation is working effectively. Checking polarity to ensure the active and neutral ends of the power plug connect to the correspondence terminals. And testing for earth leakage by measuring current flow from the mains power supply across insulation and back through the ground conductor, which must meet the standards for the equipment. These are the few common general and basic principles of electrical equipment or plant testing. Do you know what is earthing? Earthing is the process of connecting electricity to the ground to reduce the risk of electric shock. If a fault occurs, while a person is touching an earth electrical appliance, the electricity flows through the earth wire rather than through the person's body. In some cases, a portable appliance tester can be used to test electrical equipment when it is plugged into an electrical outlet. In short, earthing is for the safety of individual. Another important term. In electrical safety is PET, portable appliance testing. PET is a process whereby portable electrical appliances such as vacuum, toaster, or food mixer are routinely checked for safety. Here you have to remember, any person using a portable appliance tester should have completed an accredited training course on testing and tagging using such a device to ensure that it is done properly and safely. In other words, portable appliance testing shall not be carried out by any site worker. It should be done only by qualified, competent, and experienced 
authorized electrical staff or electrical technician. Here, one another important question, what to check when inspecting and testing electrical plants or equipment. Dear friends and fellows, there are several things you should look out for when inspecting and testing electrical plant or equipment. During your inspections and testing of electrical plant, you have to look for obvious defects and damage. Discoloration as evidence of exposure to heat, chemicals, or moisture. The integrity of protective earth and insulation resistance. Inflexible cards that may need replacing. The operating controls, for example, ensure they are in good order. The correct placement of guards and covers. Ventilation inlets and exhausts, for example, ensure they are unobstructed. And the match between the current rating of the plug and the current rating of the electrical equipment. Whenever you are inspecting an electrical equipment or a plant, you have to consider all these points. To make the inspection effective and safe, electrical installations can pose health and safety risks if they are not properly installed and maintained. An electrical insulation is any electrical wiring, accessory, consuming device, protective gear, or other equipment associated with wiring, for example, switchboards and electrical circuits. So whenever you are going for inspection, you will go through all the points, all the elements, connecting devices, and all the electrical supporting gear. Dear friends and fellows, you are on the platform of safety plus life. Today, we are discussing about electrical safety, how to inspect and test electrical equipment and plants at work. Your workplace may have electrical installations, such as distribution boards, which could expose people to health and safety risks if they are not properly installed and maintained. You can reduce the risk of electrical shock from installations in your workplace by making sure that installation work is only carried out by a licensed, competent, qualified, and experienced electrician. Point number two, obtaining a guarantee that all fixed wiring installations have been installed and tested according to wiring rules and regulations which provides minimum requirements for safe electrical insulation and compliance and number three ensuring that a competent person undertakes a risk assessment of the electrical insulation before a new electricity supply is connected or work is performed before you conduct the risk assessment on your electrical insulations you must ensure it is turned off to prevent health and safety risks are rising from the assessment process. For example, electrical shock, electrical burn, or electrocution. Take the following steps to turn off the electrical insulation. Number one, identify the insulation's energy sources and isolation points. Do you know what is isolation point? An isolation point is a part of electrical plant or equipment that has been isolated so that energy cannot be transmitted to it. Point number two, isolate the insulation from all energy sources. Here you have to remember, under the work health and safety regulations, electrical work on energized electrical equipment is not permitted unless there is absolutely no reasonable alternative means of carrying out the work. For example, life-saving equipment may be required to remain energized and for testing purposes. Point number three, ensure isolation switches are locked into the open position and cannot be moved. Do you know the definition of isolation switches? Isolation switches block the transmission of electrical energy through plant or equipment. Point number four, check that the insulation and the conductors have been de-energized. And point number five, Review the area where safe work can now be performed. 
all these five points you need to complete before starting a risk assessment on electrical installations, equipment, or electrical plants. Where there is electricity, there is risk of fire, burns, and electrocution. How to minimize risk associated with electrical installations? There are several actions you can take to reduce risks associated with electrical installations. Point number one, limit the supply voltage to the lowest level needed to do the job. Number two, make sure the equipment has adequate ventilation. Number three, provide lightning or surge protection. Number four, use safety switches where possible. Number five, ensure electromagnetic compatibility, electric and magnetic fields to prevent interference between devices. Number six, ensure adequate earthing as applicable. And number seven, provide protection against earth force. These are the minimum requirements to control electrical hazards and to protect workers from electrical shock or electrocution. You must ensure as an employer, as a project manager, or a construction manager, or a site supervisor, you must ensure your workers know how to work safely with electricity, especially when working near overhead power lines are digging near electricity cables. Two common areas in which workers need to understand the risk and be able to follow a safe work procedure are when, number one, working near overhead power lines, and number two, digging near electricity cables. Let us discuss first what safety measures are required when working near overhead power lines. In some businesses, projects, workers routinely work near overhead power lines. This may occur through working with cranes, working on elevated work platforms, or erecting scaffolding. To minimize the serious risks posed by overhead power lines, a business carry out activities near power lines should notify the power authority before commencing work. Ideally, obtain written permission from the power authority or the service provider. Conduct a pre-start job meeting to assess risk. Use a safety observer, sometimes called a spotter, to observe and warn against unsafe practices near power lines and remain a safe distance from the lines as per the electrical codes and regulations. Secondly, what safety measures are required when working or digging near electrical cables? Dear friends and fellows, Accidental contact with underground electricity cables during excavation work can result in major expenses, injuries, or even death. If you are planning excavation work, you must take appropriate steps to ensure that the work will not damage nearby electrical infrastructure. To avoid such incidents and accidents, you must contact the service provider, utility owners, to maintain safety at work to avoid damage and disruption to electrical utilities or electrical services feeding the nearby residential or commercial installations. You can also use residual current devices as an important hazard control measure for electrical equipment. An RCD, also called a safety switch, is a device for monitoring the flow of electricity through a circuit. A safety switch also automatically shuts off an electricity supply when a leaking current from faulty switches, wiring, or appliances is detected. RCDs are designed to prevent serious injury or death by disconnecting the supply of electricity before it reaches a magnitude likely to cause physical harm. As such, they are an important hazard control measure for electrical equipment. This is the benefit and the use of RCD residual current device. But remember, the use of RCDs is not a substitute for the identification and control of electrical hazards. Under the Work Health and Safety Act, an RCD is required to be used in a socket outlet where reasonably practicable if 
the electrical equipment may be exposed to conditions that may damage or reduce its lifespan. The electrical equipment is involved in a frequent movement. Damage to the electrical equipment or its electrical supply is reasonably likely or the electrical equipment is a form part of an amusement device. So these are the few conditions where you can use RCD. A person with management, a control of a workplace must take all reasonable steps to ensure that a competent person tests RCDs used at the workplace regularly to ensure the devices are operating effectively. The person must keep a record of all testing of an RCD other than any testing conducted daily until the earlier of the following occurs. The device is tested again or the device is permanently removed from use. Here, an important question. Who will install or test the RCD? Only licensed electricians. Those are authorized, competent, qualified, and experienced. Can install an RCD. You should also regularly test RCDs, which can usually be done by pressing the test button. A qualified electrician should always check complex systems. Remember, if a safety switch operates, trips several times, get help from a qualified electrician. Regular tripping is often indicative of a more serious problem. So, you must act on it as soon as possible. Don't assume no problem. Maybe there is a big problem and maybe this is the last problem in your life and maybe this problem is the end of your life electricity is beneficial but at the same time electricity is lethal electrical safety is the way how you can use electricity for the benefit of mankind and humanity any shortcut negligence or ignoring safety practices when you are dealing electricity you are working on an energized circuit. This shortcut may be cut your life. It is important to understand electrical safety, electrical hazards, and the electrical risk control measures. And that's all for now. A short training session about the electrical installations, inspection, and testing is over. If you have any question, please ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, and share the video. Hope to see you soon with a new HSC tutorial. Until then, take care, good luck, and goodbye.